Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And, um, yeah, today, I realized I react to a video called The Disturbing Part of YouTube Volume 2. I didn't realize it until just recently that I didn't react to Volume 1, so I better react to Volume 1 so I can react to Volume 2 makes sense. So we're gonna go right into it. This is The Disturbing Part of YouTube Volume 1. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's go! Hello and welcome to a brand new format. This was a long time coming. We'll take a look at the disturbing part of YouTube. I already made an iceberg video way back, but I never had a format that is fully dedicated to the dark side of YouTube. I've collected quite a few very interesting channels and videos, some of which are very unknown and go pretty deep. We're also on our way to 200,000 subs, which is just surreal, so uh, thanks a lot. I'm like 20. 27 away? At this point, we're getting to 500. Come on, hit the subscribe button, help me get to 500. Dave Jerry. This topic here was very baffling. It's extremely mysterious, but I might have a possible explanation at the end. I'm okay. unsure as to how much I'm able to show, so I will unfortunately have to work with frames of the original video instead of showing the entire thing. You'll soon understand why. Before we start, I'll have to give credit to the Tekkit Realm for this one. It was honestly very difficult to find any information on this topic, and he covered this case in his format. I'll be referring to his video in the following. Dave Jeremy was a YouTube channel that posted a 48 second long video in 2020. The video is titled, Where She Is. In the video, we can see a guy holding up a missing person poster. It has the name and image of a person. It seems to be someone who goes by Deborah Watkins. After this, he sways his camera to the left and shows a shovel and dirt. He then places the poster on the dirt. The dirt looks wet. It looks like someone recently dug it up. He then goes closer to the poster, puts a dollar note on the paper and backs off. On the dollar note, we can see a red sign, which looks very similar to the Zodiac Killer sign. Also considering the title of the video, which pretty much leaves no room for speculation. This guy seems to be the perpetrator of this girl. Looking for Deborah Watkins through regular search engines brings no results. Same applies to the channel name itself. That's also why I struggled quite a bit and I couldn't find any info or any discussions in forums. Strangely, you need to use Wayback to find archived versions of a website where she's indeed listed as missing. At the same time this website went down, the entire Day of Jeremy channel was terminated. You normally need three strikes. That is weird. I wonder why that is. Yeah, because usually you need three strikes in order to be um, removed from YouTube because they don't care about a lot of stuff you do on that damn thing. But apparently what he did, if, what happened here, she very clearly offended YouTube. It's to be permanently banned off of YouTube. This channel only had one video. In normal circumstances, that would equal to only one strike. But this channel, like I said, was completely wiped off. So it doesn't really add up. There was another channel created with the exact same name and the same upload. But this channel was also swiftly banned. It makes you wonder, how does it keep getting banned so quickly? The guy wasn't even generating huge traffic. Then, an already existing channel named Tacit Blue re-uploaded the video and his entire channel got banned. So whoever re-uploads this video gets their entire channel taken down. Interesting. So this is literally a thing of if you just have this video on your channel, the where she is when in full, your channel just gets banned immediately. I have no idea if all of the information that the Tech Realm mentions is real. But if it is, then it's really strange. I definitely believe there was some police involvement in this, but more to that in a moment. One final thing we can see on the YouTube page is a banner. It's very difficult to decipher, but the Tekkit Realm came up with a somewhat complete decipher. 
reading somebody in this age there were four when you think too hard it makes the simplest things the most complex no break the illusion i around i won't return but she needed it if i come back to the public everyone will for once know no length of sentence means anything my time has come at the bottom of the no what the heck does that even mean i d what does that even mean Note, we have a signature that looks pretty similar to the zodiac sign. So, here are my two cents. I reverse image search the image of the girl, and the girl is indeed missing. But the information in the video and on the website are false. I was redirected to the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. There we learned that this girl didn't go missing in 2020, but rather already in 2016. Also, the name is different. This girl's real name is Ashley Faith Suter who was 16 years old and went missing in Montgomery County, Tennessee. If we compare all of that to the missing poster in the video, we quickly realize that most of the information is wrong. This either was done on purpose, or the information might just be outdated, or the guy behind this entire thing is just dumb and couldn't even do proper research for this tasteless ARG. Either way, it makes sense that the police would take down the website and take down YouTube videos spreading misinformation. The full video is- Okay, that's smart. That's a good reason. I, I can go with that. So the guy didn't even do any information. He was just on YouTube with this big thing, not even doing any research. And because of that, the, guy, the police were like, we don't want any video here. Spread informa misinformation on that poster. Take every one of them down. It's probably blacklisted by YouTube to not give people the opportunity to re-upload it in order to decrease the likelihood of spreading information that would only cause more confusion. First and foremost, please do not harass anyone I mention in this or any other video on my channel. I have to give credit to Johnny the Night Guard for this one. He covered a YouTube channel called Valley Boy 75, a self-proclaimed future filmmaker animator. This channel in itself isn't even that interesting. It honestly makes the impression of an art project, but I'm not entirely convinced. It's due to two other channels that he runs, which definitely don't seem to be art projects. One is called Timothy Damitz, which is also the real name of this guy, and another one is T.D. Damitz. These channels are mainly about his religious beliefs, and there's generally a bigger incentive on the Armageddon and Apocalypse. I believe Armageddon essentially is when mankind wages war against God. That is just bizarre. Imagine mankind, even if you got five billion... This seems like the guy that'd be insane just ranting a bunch of nonsense religiously. He kind of looks like that. I could buy that about him. People on this earth waging war against God. That seems like it's very stupid. He says that it's merely his opinion and stuff, so it really makes the impression that this is not fake or an ARG, but rather honest content. Only reason I'm showing this is to make sure you understand the mic okay, from there he looks like uh, Jesse Ventura. Only in that shot does he look like Jesse Ventura. Might be a bigger motivation or intention behind the following clip. One video in particular on this channel is pretty odd and terrifying. It's called Pennsylvania Pig Puncture. TVS, Season 8, Episode 6. While I clean this off, I'm going to show you a video that I call Pennsylvania Pig Puncture. You can also tell from the comments that people are genuinely confused. It doesn't make any sense. It just randomly cuts to the footage with the pic. This video is also still online on his channel for whatever reason. In the entirety of this video, you can see him and seemingly his family hanging out. The video itself seems to include older footage, if we compare how he looked in those compared to now. As for his Valley Boy 75 channel, Timothy uses a puppet, which he named Fluffed, and was trying to scare people, I guess. I just want you guys all to know, I see you, and you, and you. I mean, yeah, it's like obviously cringy, like not gonna lie, but the pig punk- Yeah, you're gonna get terrified from that, you are gonna be so terrified with cringe, oh my god! We'll get to that part in a second, now, now, I'm not pausing on that. The, you'd be so terrified from cringe with this, that it'd be next level. 
next level cringe. This is this will make you not be able to sleep because of all the cringe. You're gonna see this thing, and you're gonna know how much cringe you dealt with, and it's gonna scare you to the point you can never recover. This this could drive people to insanity. This cringiness. I mean, yeah, it's like obviously cringy. Like, not gonna lie. But the pig puncture video is definitely the most terrifying thing I was able to witness on his channel. I just want to give a quick last reminder that I recently uploaded the second episode of my Patreon exclusive series. It is very similar to the formats that you see on my channel, but it's completely uncensored and I can talk about stuff that I couldn't do here. Check it out on Patreon, amongst everything else I offer on there for just 2 bucks. I also launched a Ko-Fi, so if you feel generous, I'd appreciate any form of support. Let's move on. I'm sure that the majority of you heard about Heaven's Gate. It wasn't a Okay, this one I know. Yeah, this one we know. We saw this in top 15 video recently. Someone commented on it. We know about the Heaven's Gate. We know that we're gonna let it play out for the people who don't know. But yeah, we. I know all about Heaven's Gate. I know about the exit statements. I know about the website. Apparently I found out today you can still get answers from it though, which is freaking weird. I'm more curious who answers it now. That'd be more curiosity to me, but um, yeah. Just some bizarre, bizarre stuff. American Cult whose 39 members ingested an applesauce pudding mix and secured plastic bags around their heads, which obviously took them all out. They believed that their bodies were merely a container or vehicle for their consciousness, and that once they passed away, they would be transferred to their next bodies. I know that I was sent here for a cross, and I'm not talking about this vehicle. I know that this vehicle was picked and prepped with my assistants and the TNDOs given a deposit. And that deposit in that vehicle sought and searched for the truth. The case itself is very disturbing, and I think for some, it is one of the most terrifying events that they heard of. Oftentimes, we only hear about what happened or what led to the ritual, but we rarely take a look at the individual members. In 2016, I see. So I've seen this more than I hear about Heaven's Gate. I have seen these videos about Heaven's Gate and these exit statements more than I've seen heard about the actual case itself if I didn't knew anything else I would know how they died and I know about these videos that is it I never hear about anything else so don't you tell me you only hear about what I hear about this too damn much team a YouTube channel named thoughts on things and stuff uploaded a two hour long video titled heaven's gate student exit statements in this video we get a rare insight into multiple members and what they were thinking in their final moments. It answered a lot of things that I was asking consciously and subconsciously, which were things like, what's next for me? What is life about? What, why am I here? Uh, what is the meaning of life? Shortly after recording this video, they would carry out the ritual. It's surprising how articulate and seemingly intelligent they were. It just goes to show that regardless of who you are, you can always be preyed upon by these malicious cults and be manipulated and taken advantage of. The following This is one we've seen before, we did a Nick Crowley video on this one. We did a Nick Crowley video on the uh, Daily Capper, I think is what it's called. And all of that stuff. Yeah, we've done, we've done a whole thing on this one too. So I know all about this one too. Thanks to Nick Crowley. Topic, especially the YouTube channels in question were very unknown, and it was only recently uncovered on the subreddit Internet Mysteries, even though this entire thing dates back to over a decade ago. OP describes two YouTube channels that were created for the sole purpose of celebrating perpetrators and mocking, yep. as well as bullying the victims. Yep. One of the commenters also says, you just unearth something really, really gross, weird, and horrible. I looked into it. Seems like it's a dead community of predators who would blackmail the underage. The same group was for instance responsible for the extreme bullying of Amanda Todd, Jesse Slaughter, and other underage children online. This entire topic was very well covered on WordPress, but it would take far too long to go through everything, so I'll just stick to the main points and YouTube channels and the following. The YouTube channel seemingly belong to the same person or group of people. 2009 Capo Awards and 2010 Capo Awards feature multiple videos of rankings. They are pretty self-explanatory, so let's just have a look. Agents 
arrested Cilipini at his Massachusetts home last month and found more than 100 videotapes of webcam sessions like these. 20-year-old John Hawk has his own web show. He streams live videos and has quite a few followers. But this is Hawk's mugshot. Police say he the woman live online. How do people get payments for doing I honestly am unsure what I'm even allowed to show and what not, but the people making these videos are putting predatory websites and people in All the right, ranking. Go back. But the people making these videos. It says slay me what I honestly am unsure on. what I'm even allowed to show and what not, but the people making This is from WWE This is the Slay Me Awards from WWE. I know this definitely. This is the Slammy Award thing they use in WWE because it says Slammy at the bottom of it. What the fuck? In these videos. Yeah, I can't make it so, but it says Slammy. Are websites and people in the ranking. And from what I understand, people were able to vote. According to the description of a different video, 4,000 people voted. There are a lot of hints regarding CP as well, but it's very difficult to understand everything without any context. The description reads, There are many moments in capping that shock and amaze us. Moments like online live, our word, and cappers being arrested, or if moderation is killing our win. What was the most shocking of them all in the year 2009? Another video is called Public Side of the Year, and the rank 1 website is Anon IB, which was shut down on grounds of CP and endangerment of women, according to Change.com. There, the author says, Most of the girls who became exposed by the men on these threats are 15 to 18 years old. How do I know? My city has a threat. I have female friends that are pictured on there, and I'm working to get them off of it. I'm working to stop this invasion of privacy that none of these girls ask for. And ultimately, I'm working to end this website's proliferation of CP. So yeah, not really surprising that this website would end up at number one in their video. What also becomes apparent is that they trick these girls into doing something regrettable in order to blackmail them and force them to undress themselves on camera and this in turn is also used to further blackmail them, even leading, in the case of Amanda Todd, to her taking her own life. The dates of the case and the group's activity also line up. Since the perpetrator, Coben, harassed Amanda online between 2009 and 2013, the same time where coppers were the most active. While doing some more research into this, I found another YouTube channel named The Daily Capper News, who made a full video on the Amanda Todd case. This video has well over 100,000 views. While this YouTube channel and its main demographic are all perpetrators, they now start backpedaling, which seems to be a desperate attempt at saving face. For more details to the recent Amanda Todd tragedy, the majority of people seem misinformed. The media tends to miss out on a lot of key information. Others have no idea what they're talking about, and police investigators have no understanding of the internet at all. While people have made Amanda Todd's case into an example of bullying, what they tend to overlook is the capping and blackmail aspect of the story. Contrary to what the media believes, this wasn't just a petty case of cyberbullying. For them to continue to get the capping community mixed up with cases such as Sting. According to the comments, the opinions seem to be mixed. This account makes me sick. How could someone ever do this to a child? Reported this video. This video is so effing sick. They should be thrown in jail. To the person who made her do this, are you happy? This girl is dead because of you. She had her whole life ahead of her. Why? Why would you do that? With someone replying, yes, I'm happy. Someone else also says, the people who make the daily camper are true heroes to the earth. They are one of the greatest things to ever happen to this earth and will always stand behind them wherever they may be. Also replying to her comment of someone asking how perpetrators are the heroes of the earth, saying, because they took the life of Amanda Todd. My man, who are you? No, see, you know how they, he says, don't harass people? I'm gonna tell you, harass Daniel Hugens. <laughs> harass him. Yep, I'm telling you that. I am telling you to do so. If something happens to him, and they say, who did, tell them I did. Tell them I told you to do it, because he deserves to be harassed. Are the heroes of the earth saying, because they took the life of Amanda Todd. 
In the other channel's Capo Awards 2010, there's only one public video on it. In this instance, the video production looks similar, but we have an AI voice narrating the entire thing. Also, with Jesse Slaughter being a nominee. Welcome Cappers and Camp to the official 2010 Capford Awards voting video. Here we will go over the awards and the nominees. Jesse Slaughter's freaked out. There is no need to go into any detail about this. Everyone knows the story. Papa Jazz wants a moment. This 50-year-old brought lols to camp for the win with his lip camps with 17-year-old Mama PhD. Ozzy owned by Triple X for May. Ozzy has denied blackmailing anyone all this year. But when the infamous Stikon happens get a hold of some information, they force him to apologize to all the girls he blackmailed in recent months. They have their own websites and hangout spots. I can definitely tell you one thing. I feel so bad for anyone who had to deal with these fuckers. And for anyone who agrees with them or is on their side or is fucking Daniel Hugens. Don't, don't comment on one of my videos if you support these people. Because the last thing you want is my people. Because I will encourage people to come after you. For, I will have people harass you on the internet. Because y'all deserve it if you support these people. You deserve to be harassed. I said it. I'll say it. I don't care. I'm not afraid. I say it all. If you support these people, you deserve to be harassed. But everything has been shut down. They also have a daily motion in Vimeo, where we can find videos that were not uploaded on YouTube. This is a very large rabbit hole, so I don't want to go through everything. But in one of the videos, they basically explain what capping is. Now a lot of people wonder exactly what capping is really like. Some people have gone as far as to describe it as an underground version of Girls Gone Wild. In some ways that can be considered true. Let's compare, shall we? The signs are like the clubs. There are shy girls. Drunk girls. Friends. And the ones you already know will be epic. This would be a typical example of convincing a girl to flash in a chat room that would look something like this. Usually after a girl flashes, you have those idiots who think it's will look different a second time in a chat room that would look something like this. It's more or less harassing underage girls until they give in and do what they say. With the biggest difference being that during camping, you'll usually end up blackmailing your victim. Of course, there are a lot of different. Well, I say there's people who do this before. Um, this is a sick situation that none of y'all, no one should have to go through. And these all these people are fucked in the head and don't deserve to be with humanity. Between capping and girls gone wild. For one, there are no black males on girls gone wild. But then again. Those girls know they're going to have their videos shared all over the world. While girls on the internet will cry when they get recorded. Honestly, I'm somewhat surprised that the Daily Motion channel is still online because some of the content is really strange. Like I already mentioned, most of this is from 2009 to 2012. So the cappers are either gone or they may operate in smaller groups or solo from now on. I made a full deep dive on this channel way back, and I'd say this is easily the most real and disturbing YouTube rabbit hole I've ever seen. I don't know anything about this one, so this will be an actual learning one for me. TEACH ME SOMETHING! The videos show a guy that is being tormented and is being held in captivity with chains. There were real videos of him on YouTube getting burned with a furnace iron. There were multiple interviews with him where he's accused of basically being a traitor to his country and therefore has no rights anymore, and he knows that no one will come to help him. I also have received multiple messages from viewers back then that decided to also look into this, and they are convinced that this must be real, but I always leave the possibility open that it might be the most elaborate troll in history, but it seems super unlikely. The topic is very unknown, and prior to my video, there were no mentions of this topic on YouTube. After my video, there was a Spanish channel that did a video on this as well, but it really didn't receive much recognition. In total, I managed to find five channels that were tied to this topic, but in actuality, there were a lot more. 
The channels in question seem to be all banned now, but I archived some of the footage. In this video, we will mainly focus on only one channel named Aristillo Santiago Cortes. This is pretty much the entire channel. A guy chained up, crosses on his skin. He also lost a lot of weight. If we compare his body prior to his abduction, we can clearly tell that he was most likely starving for multiple years in captivity. There are also occasional changes in terms of location in these videos. Here for instance, it is dark outside and there are pieces of paper next to him. In some of these videos, the cameraman shows the surrounding area. Here they clearly are outside. Besides this, every video on this channel is almost identical. Also in none of these videos do we hear the victim talking. Here they are inside again. Notable is the interior of the building. It looks abandoned. That's probably why he feels confident taking him outside to film as well. Up until this point, one could have maybe considered this entire thing to be a weird fetish or very elaborate troll, but with the following clip, the pos- About to say, because at this moment, it's just this weird shit going on. I don't know anything that really fully puts into perspective that this is a total real thing. Because there are some weird people just some weird shit for attention. Stability diminishes drastically. In oh. this one, the guy behind the camera steps forward. He heats his furnace iron and it's definitely 100% the real deal. Keep in mind that this was completely accessible at the time for years and only after the release of my video did it get taken down. However, this video still feels kinda off. It's without a doubt real, but they seem very inexperienced or even insecure with how they torment the victim. At the time, I came up with a theory that the guy behind the camera was forced to do this, but it was just speculation on my part. I honestly have no idea. Well, I said I'll only talk about one of the channels. I have to show you one of the interviews on the other channel. ¿Te sientes desilusionado por perderlo todo? No. Sabes que cualquiera te puede torturar y a nadie le importa. Sí. Sabes que no hay consecuencias de lo que te hagan. Sí. Con las autoridades. What is going on while he is talking? He is in pain. Something is happening to him while he is talking. Because he legitimately seems like he is in pain the whole time. Sientes justo el uso de total sódico y lo que hizo Victor Serra? ¿Cómo? Sientes justo el uso del pen total I'll link my full deep dive into That is bizarre. This is a bizarre situation. Yeah, I don't know what to say on that one, but this guy's in pain just talking. This topic down below, and I highly recommend checking it out. It's easily one of the darkest channels, if not the darkest, on YouTube. Would you guys like to see me react to this video? And go down this entire rabbit hole? Let me know. In America, many states allow the photography and broadcasting of courtrooms. This leads to very disturbing hearings that have been captured on tape and shared on YouTube. Particularly, one stands out, and some of you should be familiar with it. It's a recording from Chris McNabb, who was heavily denying the allegations against him, taking the life of his two-week-old baby. I just don't understand how you find somebody guilty. <laughs> Not this guy! I don't remember this guy! This guy's an absolute tool! No, 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 see this guy! This guy is not disturbing. This guy is an idiot. This guy is a genuine idiot. This guy sentences himself. Because the guy goes... <laughs> the judge says, not him. No, no, no. The guy says, it's not him. I didn't do it. It's not me. So the judge goes, okay. Well, let's say it's not you. What do you think should happen to the person that is that they did that did do this? What should they be sentenced? And then he goes, he should be sentenced to life. I think it is. Or sentenced to... 
spend the rest of his life in prison. I think is what he says, something like that. And then the guy goes, okay, I send you to life in prison without parole. I love this. Because this is the definition of a man who's stupid. Of doing something to a 15-day-old baby. Because there was no evidence whatsoever that proved anything about me putting my hands on my kids. I've never done it. I never would. I don't believe in it. I was beat as a child, and I don't agree with it at all. And I would never do it. I would never do this. That's all I gotta say. I would never do it on this. Honestly, it really sounds like he truly believes what he's saying. Regardless, the judge then asked him one last question, and this clip certainly got a lot of attention. It's the greatest stupid moment I have ever seen. It is the gr This is my favorite judge mo thing because of how ridiculous this is. It's, it's amazing. Well, I can make a lot of comments on what you said. I can make a lot of comments on the trial, but I know that was just be arguing with you or talking with you. I'll ask you one simple question. You claim you're innocent, so you tell me what sentence the man or woman that you claim did this should receive. If you ever find out who did them, they deserve to be under the jail. Okay. So they ought to get the maximum sentence? Most definitely. Okay. On the crime of malice murder, I sent you to life in confinement without parole. On concealing the death of another, I sent you to 10 years in confinement consecutive or after. Not only was he... That is the... It's still the greatest moment ever. This is amazing for that. This is one of the best courtroom moments just for how stupid this human being, this man is. It's that and the one when the guy and the girl ascends at the same time and the guy's reaction to jaw open for like a good five to ten minutes. Charged for life in prison without parole. His wife was also sentenced to 30 years in prison because she was an accomplice in taking their daughter's life and subsequently dumping their body in a duffel bag. They were both high during their crime and until the very end they were protesting and told the media that they were innocent but to no avail. So this channel and its content has now been banned off of YouTube after I covered it. So thanks to everyone for reporting it. But the context of those videos are very disturbing. You were able to see cat videos that definitely felt odd. After doing some more research I understood that the videos on the channel didn't depict the full version. It I, this is one I feel like I don't want to know. I don't want to know what it is, I gotta let it play out, but I don't really want to know. This is one I kind of just want to, I wish I didn't have to know about. Instead, we only see one segment of the full videos. We see the part prior to the torment of these cats. Yeah. And this is to circumvent the deletion of the video or a possible takedown of the entire channel. This worked for the YouTuber for a few years actually, but after my coverage in the subbing part episode 9 format, the channel received mass reports, causing the channel to get terminated. In one of the latest uploads, we were able to see a cat in a cage. After a few seconds, the uploader decided to show an image of the cat. This goes on for the majority of the video. Near the end, it cuts back to the footage. The cat now looks very different from the image in the previous footage shown. The fur suddenly was black. Just looking at the footage without the audio, you might have not been able to guess what happened. However, the audio pretty much reveals what caused the dramatic change in appearance. While I won't play the audio here, you can hear a blowtorch in the background. The description of this video reads, Provided Gato, thank you. While you can only hear a blowtorch in the video, it's confirmed that the blowtorch was used to burn the cat alive. In total, the lives of 13 cats were taken this way. 52-year-old Makoto Oya is the perpetrator. He shared videos of him doing this for 13 months before he was arrested. The footage is very graphic, hence the cut version on YouTube. During the first stages of trial, Makoto would argue that it shouldn't be a crime to take the lives of these cats since he was only quote unquote carrying out a pest control. More specifically, This is a disturbed individual. This is a disturbed messed up individual man. He said, The excrement and urine of cats stinks. Their nails are sharpened to injure. I don't recognize the extermination of harmful animals to be a violation of the law. So basically, he doesn't regret anything, and he was only sentenced to nearly two years and probably only served one. This YouTube channel here is just one of many that share similar or identical content here on YouTube. These people are also Japanese forums like 5CH, but it's just too difficult to research when you don't speak the language, so I'll stop here. This is probably one of the more shocking disaster videos here on YouTube.
In 2020, in the port of Beirut, a large amount of ammonium nitrate exploded. The cargo had 2.75 tons of the substance, and it was stored in a warehouse without proper safety measures for the previous six years. The explosion was so enormous that it was felt in neighboring countries like Turkey, Syria, Palestine and parts of Europe, more than 240 kilometers away. The entire incident was captured by multiple people, so here are different POVs. That must be terrifying if you live there. And out of nowhere, an explosion happens that causes just full... Like, it had to be multiple, multiple people had to have died because of that. Like, that must be insane. That would be scary as fuck. Look at that! Initially, I thought that the numbers of victims must be incredibly high, based on the footage, with all of the buildings seemingly disintegrating. But I found it very surprising that a bit over 200 people passed away, and 7,000 people were injured. I would have guessed. I wonder if they're lying. That doesn't sound right. Even I can't buy that. There had to be more people hurt. I don't, I'd have to believe it's higher than that that the numbers would have easily been in the tens of thousands. The explosion was nonetheless extremely devastating. Yeah. Hundreds of people lost their lives. It also destroyed 40% of the buildings of the city, and 300,000 people became homeless, with the World Bank reporting a total loss of over $15 billion. I previously covered this case, but it's fairly unknown and super disturbing and not everyone is watching every single video of mine, so I think it makes sense to cover it again. This one was recommended by a viewer on my subreddit. The post reads, Russian digs out a camera out of his eye on YouTube. It's a no, I'm not redoing this guy. Nope, I don't like this guy. I don't like this one. It's kind of weird. I don't need to... No, I'm good. I'll leave it here. I'm ending it here. I don't care about... I don't like this one. No. Yep. No, no. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this reaction video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see y'all for the next one.